Welcome to another episode of Casual Citizen, an ongoing series about the upcoming first-person MMO Star Citizen by Cloud Imperium Games. I'm your host, Alyssiana, from the Mystic Worlds Gaming Blog. This week's episode is a long time coming for me. The idea began with the release of the ARC star map and evolved over time as I delved into the data to understand how it could be used to inform my gameplay. I initially manually compiled a star map matrix and shared it with the community via a Google Sheet. The purpose was to present the data in a manner that was easier to consume and scan, especially on mobile devices. It's not as sophisticated as the star map itself, but it served its purpose. I have now matured that idea into an auto-populated website. Feel free to follow along on the live site, which is contentcreatorsunlimited.com. I'm reusing a domain I had available when I began the journey. A future release will change it over to the permanent domain I have in place. Please, Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Begin transmission. I started down this road after becoming intrigued by the information presented in the official ARC star map. It was entertaining to explore what will become our physical universe and read the bits of lore it contained. I enjoy lore for its storytelling aspects and I also endeavor to include lore and star system information in my content to enhance the context of the topic being discussed. The star system information is also very relevant to player careers, a huge focus for me in MMOs. This site reflects a desire to have the star system information more accessible and create opportunities to combine it with relevant lore from the Galactic Guides. The ARC star map itself is amazing. It's useful for many things, but not everything. For example, a player is starting out in the mining career. They might want to know things like, what are the safest UEE star systems that contain asteroid belts? What are the systems closest to where their ship is that contain asteroid belts? What asteroid belts contain common materials suited for beginning miners? You'd be hard pressed to quickly or easily answer these questions using the ARC star map. Another example, a group of friends want to organize a refueling run using the Starfarer. They're going to have escorts, some of whom want to engage in local combat while the Starfarer is sitting around sucking up vapors. So, what are the star systems that contain gas giants? Of those which have a moderate amount of combat activity. Again, it would be tricky and time consuming to use the ARC star map to answer these questions. They're better suited to an environment where you can see information about multiple star systems at once. Search for specific star system attributes. Filter and sort the data returned. This is what I've tried to accomplish in a straightforward and simplistic manner. It ain't fancy, but it works. Basic features. Daily retrieval of data from the official ARC star map. The frequency will be increased as necessary. The star map matrix page shows all known star systems. It's designed to support easy scanning of high level system data support searching for a specific star system. Clicking on the column headings will sort the matrix data by that attribute. Clicking on a star system name takes you to the detailed system composition page. The detailed star system composition page. It shows the star system and all of its known celestial bodies. You get to see everything that makes up a single star system in one screen star system dossiers. These pages combine elements from my star map matrix and the single system composition view, but they are pre-filtered to specific player careers. Refueling, star systems that have gas planets. Mining, star systems that have asteroid belts or asteroid fields. Green planets, star systems that have green planets 
So this is relevant to careers that rely on populations of consumers, import, export, player transport, things of that nature. Fair Chance Act, systems designated as protected for developing species. This will be relevant to science careers and potentially contraband and black market activities. Trade, that's coming in the next release and it will be relevant to cargo hauling opportunities, import, export, and black market. Let's take a closer look at my star map matrix. Again, this lists all known star systems. It's intended as a quick way of scanning basic star system information. It assists in identifying systems that may warrant a more detailed review. It's designed to answer which systems type questions. Which systems contain binary stars? What are all the systems governed by the UEE? What are all the systems governed by the Banu? What systems have high or low populations, economies, and or danger? Using the following features, you can answer these types of questions. Each of the columns in the star map matrix can be used to sort the data in the table by clicking the column heading, such as name, type, or population. Clicking it the first time sorts from A to Z. Clicking it a second time sorts from Z to A. You can search for a specific star system by typing the name in the search box located above the table and then pressing the Enter key. Delete the value you entered and press Enter again to see all star systems. Population, economy, and danger use a stoplight coloring metaphor. It's a method used for quickly identifying good, poor, or bad performance. This can be tricky when it comes to player professions since good and bad can be subjective. In this case, I'm using it to denote volume, how much exists according to the star map. High economy or population will be green, low will be red. Conversely, high danger will be red and low will be green. So if you're a merchant, you want low danger, green, if you're looking for combat, then you want high danger, red. To see more details about a single star system, you click its name. This will take you to the next page we're about to discuss, the detailed star system composition page. A closer look at the detailed system composition page. The intent of this page is to provide a deep dive into a single star system. It displays all of that star system's known celestial bodies and jump points. It includes the descriptions and other useful information. The celestial bodies are grouped by type. Stars, planets, jump points, man-made, asteroid belts, and satellites. Everything else would be grouped under miscellaneous. For example, the black hole in Tamsa is under miscellaneous. The next release will combine information gleaned from the galactic guides. And there's much more information available in the underlying data for the ARC star map that I'm sifting through. So remember that this is a work in progress and the information contained in these pages may change over time. Multi-system dossier pages, putting data into tighter context. The more context you can incorporate into information, the more useful it becomes for answering specific questions. This idea manifests itself in what I'm calling dossier pages. Dossiers combine the star map matrix and system composition and include lore into predefined scenarios, where each scenario represents specific player career opportunities such as mining, fuel collection, cargo hauling, etc. Dossier pages show multiple star systems, so they contain fewer data points than the single system view system composition page. It's just enough celestial data plus lore and eventually user contributed data to assist in logistics planning. I enjoy having data at my fingertips to help inform decisions. For me, it's a natural desire, given that I'm a data analyst turned product manager for analytics solutions. 
this natural mode of behavior supercharged my resolve to make the data more consumable. All of the dossier pages have similar capabilities. They initially show all of the star systems that meet the intent of that page. They support selecting multiple star systems as a filter. They support selecting multiple government alignments as a filter. Planet information within each star system section can be sorted by clicking the column headings. It lists the jump points associated with all of the star systems currently displayed to help identify common pathing for route planning. Now, it would be wonderful if I had a way to build in a jump planning system, but I don't have that capacity right now. So what this table does is shows you all of the jump points that are in common for the systems you're currently looking at then allows you to sort them descendingly, so from Z to A, so you can see which star systems have the highest amount of commonality so that you can use that to help you select a meaningful starting point when you're trying to map out your route. Recap. I consider the matrix view and the system composition pages to be the fundamental locations for investigating what we know about the physical star system universe. The matrix is designed to support quickly scanning through the known star systems. While the system composition is the deep dive view where you confirm that a star system meets your needs. If you're doing logistical planning for a specific career, check to see if there's a dossier page that might be helpful. While Google Chrome is the recommended browser for this site, it should work just fine with Internet Explorer. Some of the pages, such as the star map matrix, work really well in an iPad, too. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and we'll check out Alyssiana's World of Star Citizen at contentcreatorsunlimited.com. There's more to the site than the star map data, so take time to explore it, and your feedback is welcome. Until next time, be kind and fly safe. This is Alyssiana signing off and transmission.